Good morning and welcome to Spotlight 92. I'm your host, Malvin Massey, and of course, every Thursday we talk to the movers and shakers of the Memphis community, the people that are making things happen for your benefit and mine. Our guests today are here to talk about nutrition, healthy eating, food islands, all sorts of cool stuff that has, well, cool and uncool stuff that has to do with nutrition here in the city of Memphis, and the participation in the University of Memphis School of Health Studies. Our guests are here to talk about the upcoming grocery store tours, which we talked about earlier, and the nutrition classes that go along with it, taught by dietetic interns and students. And uh, our guest this morning, uh, who we're always thrilled to get a chance to get her over here, Dr. Ruth Williams Hooker, who's associate professor at the School of Health Sciences, and this time, Sarah Zellers, who is her master's nutrition intern and grad assistant. Good morning, both, both of the ladies. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here with us today. So, Dr. Ruth, we were talking about this in February, and uh, I see you've kept it going. Right, right. We uh, we applied for and received another grant from the state of Tennessee Minority Disparities Division of the Health Department. So we've expanded to uh, senior citizen centers teaching classes. We've expanded to North Mississippi. We're teaching in the South Haven Library and the Horn Lake Interstate Boulevard Kroger doing grocery mm. store tours. And the grant has enabled us to purchase things to help provide the classes like overhead projector and screens because libraries have that but most senior citizens facilities don't don't have those sort of things wow this, so is this word of mouth that you're getting so much business <laughs> pretty much we uh we had some little cards made yeah. and gave them to all like business cards with the information and yeah, we've handed them out to dietitians at all the hospitals some of the dialysis centers um, some doctors in Memphis so that they can give them to their patients that yeah. they recommend they come to a class or a tour. Right on. As a matter of fact, the, the card that Dr. Ruth is talking about is University of Memphis, we recommend you attend a free grocery store tour nutrition class as a follow-up to your diet instructions in the hospital. Please call 901-678-2989 to register. All tours and classes are provided by nutrition interns and students at the University of Memphis and are free of Right, everything's free. free. Wow. So this next, the next, uh, well, you got two things to talk about. Here. Yeah. <laughs> we always get a kick out of the grocery store tours, so I, I like the idea of that. So uh, you've got the tour starting back. I see you started in September, actually. Right, right. Mm. And we are actually in the process of making a mobile grocery store, and it will be conducted at Goodlett Elementary School on mm-hmm. October the twenty fourth at the PTO meeting. So that's gonna be our first mobile grocery store where people can't come to the store, so we're taking the store to them. (laughs) That's pretty good. (laughs) And we've been collecting um, empty cans, boxes, bottles of all kinds of foods so we can pretend like we're in the grocery store and show them the difference between maybe a sugar-coated cereal and Cheerios, the difference in the sugar content. Yeah, the neat thing about the grocery store tours is that it's hands-on. And so instead of just trying to explain to somebody how to read a nutrition label or how to do healthy shopping practices, we can actually show them and we can talk to them about the brands that they actually purchase. And we can show them how to compare instead of just in theory how to compare. Yeah. And so the people who actually go on the tours with us, they always come away and say how much they've learned and what amazing fun tricks that they get to you know, use the next time they go shopping, and they always say, I'm so excited to go grocery shopping next time. And how many of us can say that they're excited to go grocery shopping? Right. And we um, have a paper that we will, will be published in the next month in the online journal of obesity and diabetes research okay. about the grocery store tours over the past two years. And 88% of the people that attended the tours said that they would change their eating habits based on what they learned and the nutrition label was the most important thing mm-hmm. to the people that attended the tours you know it's it's hard for so many people uh, because of their situations and what have you to to cut out the uh, fast foods that, right. that everybody you know it's so quick and easy to do but uh from what i've learned just from talking with you and your and your students over the years the the uh 
it's just as inexpensive or it's just as, as uh, cost effective to learn how to properly get the foods that you need uh, at the grocery store. Right. And we go ahead. Oh, one of the things that when we give our tours is we actually talk about and give tips and tricks on how to do cost savings and time savings in the kitchen. And so the different grocery stores do have products out there to make life easier and quicker that you can cook at home and avoid the extra salt and the extra fat of eating out, but still have a meal on the table in under 30 minutes. Right. Wow. And the AARP. They provide a tote bag for the grocery store tours, and it has um, the My Plate information inside, a little spiral-bound book. Right. And so they get that, and they get the, the little uh, bag, the little tote bag, and some other little knickknacks, like maybe a teaspoon or something. And then we give away one prize at every tour in every class. <laughs> and those are things that you might use in the kitchen like measuring cups and spoons or kitchen towels salt and pepper shakers i actually have a lot of fun buying that stuff with somebody else's money (laughs) (laughs) we also do do taste testing at the grocery store tours and so the different products that we talk about if it's something that we can taste test we try and actually taste test so that that way if it's something that somebody has never tried before and we're encouraging them to try it they can actually taste it beforehand and so that way they're not having to spend their money and not know if they like it or not and a lot of people will try something they've never even heard of and then say oh next time i'm going to have this i'm going to buy this this is great (laughs) and And sometimes people in the tour have lactose intolerance so they, they don't drink regular milk but they've never tried almond milk or soy milk and they would like to taste it before they buy it to make sure they like it. Exactly, because I have that same. I don't have lactose intolerance, but I'm going to try that silk. But I've been afraid to do it because I don't want to buy a whole. Why right. you don't want to spend four dollars on it and then not like it? Yeah, right. right. <laughs> That's a great idea, Sarah. How, how how did you get to be the assistant this time? Well, I actually started volunteering with Dr. Ruth as an undergrad for about two years. I guess I've been yeah. volunteering with the grocery store tours and. Um, I actually started as a tour guide with her her very first year we started this and oh, okay. I figured experience. out that <laughs> yeah I figured out that this is really what I like doing I've always said that the people who need access to dietitians the most are the ones who can't afford it or they don't have access and mm. so things like these these programs um, that have the grants and that have this gives us the ability to go out and to provide this access. And so when Dr. Ruth said that she needed a new GA for the upcoming school year and I got accepted to the program, I said, oh, me, me, pick me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Sarah's actually the trainer now. She yeah. trains the new interns how to conduct the grocery store tours. Yeah. She's uh, done that, I think, three years. Yeah, this is my third year doing yeah. the trainings also. Are you going to have a good crew, a, a nice-sized crew of people? We have 15 mm-hmm. interns. And about ten undergraduate students that are helping. Yeah. Oh wow! And still, uh, it's still a project with Kroger. It is associated mm-hmm. with Kroger, and then the libraries, the Fraser Library, yeah. the South Branch, Whitehaven, and South Haven, Mississippi. Yeah. We have done uh, classes like Dr. Reese said at some senior centers before. Also, um, yeah. we've done classes at. Out Memphis, which is the local LGBTQT community center. Um, some other community centers have asked us to come out and do classes, and we're still trying to work those into our schedules. So, mm-hmm. again, our, our grant focuses on minority groups and low income groups, low-income and groups. so that's yeah. that's the group that we're focused on. And so, <laughs> we're we're trying to make it happen to as many places as we can, but because all of our teachers are students it makes it hard to work around everybody's school schedule and oh so. yeah i know that from trying yeah. to schedule a station here yeah. we have had to put some people off until january february mm-hmm. because we have so many classes already scheduled before christmas and then you know students are off for christmas and a lot of them go mm-hmm. home home mm-hmm. So we'll start back the third week in January, probably. And the Goodlett Elementary School, they have a grant project-based learning, and they pick a project. And there's 75 students, first through fifth grade, and they pick a project to study. 
So this, I mean, uh, uh, something to study. So this semester it's St. Jude. So they asked me if I would come and talk about nutrition at St. Jude since I worked there 19 years. (laughs) So I did. And, you know, I told them about these other things we have. So they've sent out, we developed a survey and they sent it out to their parents about um, purchasing food and their um, nutrition needs because it's a food desert where that school is. Yes. There's not a grocery store there. So that's that's why we're taking the grocery store to them to show them how, how to shop. Yeah. If you just tuned in, by the way, this is Spotlight 92. We are talking. Dr. Ruth Williams Hooker, Associate Professor at the School of Health Sciences, Health Studies, rather, and uh, her ass- grad assistant right now and uh, director of the Nutrition Intern Program, <laughs> a master working on the wow. intern program is Sarah Zellers. And we are talking about nutrition classes and grocery store tours that will be led by the nutrition interns and students. And this is uh, all because of the University of Memphis Health Studies program, uh, a grant that they got. And, and part of the, from our old statistics from back before, Memphis has the highest rate of obesity in the nation. Obesity leads to hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, and other diseases. African Americans have a greater incidence of obesity and these diseases, and they hope to decrease these numbers by providing nutrition education. And that goes along with the classes and the nutrition, the tours. And uh, so, let's see, on the schedule, the very next grocery store tour, October the 7th at Horn Lake Kroger. Right, on Interstate Boulevard, right by the interstate. It's at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Last about an hour. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then going down uh, October on the 14th, it's going to be right here at Poplar Cleveland at the Kroger there. And then November the 4th, it's Summer Avenue at Kroger, the Kroger at Summer Avenue. And then November the 11th, Horn Lake Kroger again. That's pretty cool. (laughs) They're all at 11 a.m. And they last about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And you get to taste stuff. It's fun. It's actually yeah. fun. Yep. And you get a goodie bag to take home with you with um, things from AARP and free samples. And there's always a prize that we give away at every tour. <laughs> Do they last an hour? I bet you can't keep it to an hour. Oh, you no. We, we try and keep it as close to an hour as we can. If mm. people have more questions, they're welcome to stay after with the tour guides. Um, but okay, we try yeah. and... Re- let the whole group go as close to an hour as we can because everybody's busy and it's a Saturday and people have families and lives and yeah. other obligations. And so we try and keep it as close to an hour as we can. But if they have extra questions, they're welcome to hang out and mm-hmm. talk to the tour guides. Right. And, and, and this happened, like you said, these are on the Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Right. The Saturdays. Every, almost everything's on a Saturday. The Horn Lake, I mean, the South Haven classes in the library are on Tuesdays, I believe. Some of the mm-hmm. library classes are on mm-hmm. weekdays. But it just depends on we, – we try and schedule those, some on weekdays and some on weekends, because the libraries have told us that we used to always do those on the weekends also, but then the librarians came back to us and said they would have people who are interested, but they work on the weekends, but they're off on the weekdays. And so this time we have tried to make those more available to more people because not everybody has the weekends off. Yeah. Right. And we've added a, a new class topic, healthy eating during the holidays – and uh, it's very appropriate for right now. Right, you know, and the yes. Parks and Recreation in Hernando, Mississippi, they have a class called Heal, H E A L, and it's a 10 week class. And they learn a, about all kinds of ways to heal yourself, like stress reduction, yoga, and they wanted us to come talk about nutrition. Yeah. So I'm going to do the one during the holidays. That's perfect. They all tie together with people's health, I guess. Yes. So the White Haven Library, the the classes, the, the, the next class, is it on the 26th? I thought you said it was one before then. The one on the oh, 10th. Oh, South Haven Library October the 10th. is October the 10th. Right. And that one's topic is low-sodium diet. Right. And I'll be making some low-sodium cornbread dressing for everybody to taste. And I did that at the last senior citizens facility mm. and they liked it so much they wanted the leftovers to take home <laughs> that's pretty good I, I, i've always been told everybody always tell you put too much salt on your food right. i like that taste but i guess it's not good for you at all no mm. and if you if you look the if you look at a can of chicken broth mm. each serving has about 900 milligrams of sodium 
and the low sodium chicken broth is about 500 milligrams mm. but the homemade is more like 25 milligrams <laughs> and remember you're only supposed to have about 2300 milligrams in a whole day oh goodness so yes so if you eat a can of soup you've had right, enough for right, a week <laughs> right. Right. Uh, that's interesting though that's that's uh Okay, that's interesting. Okay, then that's the next class, the nutrition class, taught wow. by dietetic interns and students. And that's the low-sodium diet. That's at the South Haven Library, and that's at uh, uh, October the 10th. And all classes begin at 11 a.m. Right, and, and they can an call that number to sign up. They can go by the library and sign up, or they can just show up. Yeah, it's important to be there, though. It's important, to, and, and registration is so that they know how to have, yeah, know how to have enough stuff for you. Right, right. Like if we have there. 25 people, you know, maybe I would need to make more dressing as opposed to if we have 10 people. Right. So we want so, enough for everybody to eat mm-hmm. and get a goodie bag. Yeah, so, and the number to call, by the way, for registration, and I'll give it to you several times as we go along, but for more information and everything else and to register, the number is 901 678 Two nine eight nine. That's six seven eight two nine eight nine, and that's the number for both the grocery store tour information and the nutrition classes as well. Right. And that. Uh, so then the next one, the next class, that's the one that's on October the twenty sixth at the White Haven Library. Right. Yes. Okay. And then on the twenty eighth is at the Fraser Library. Yes. Right. And both of those are about healthy shopping on a budget. <laughs> Yeah. And, yep. Now that's something, you know, they used to have home economics classes and stuff in high school. They don't do that anymore. Right. Yeah. Is that part of the curriculum here, though, what you're learning to do? Uh, we do do some of that, yeah. Um, we, in, we have a whole class about um, food service management, and so we learn how to do budgets for – we're geared more toward – large scale like hospitals and things like that but it it, it's teaching us how to budget for people and how to budget per serving especially in like for instance if we go on to work in the public school system where you're trying to feed kids for pennies on the dollar but you still have to meet all the guidelines that are set from the government you know and you're having to meet all these nutritional guidelines and recommendations how do you do that when you have less than what is it two dollars two dollars to feed a child with you know and so but we we can take that and we can uh, put it toward our own lives and then therefore help others teach you know yeah in fact we just finished the project um in one of my classes the snap project where we uh had four dollars and fifty cents a day and we did this for three days um to eat off of and we (laughs) had to meet all of our macro and micronutrient goals every day for three days but we only had four dollars and fifty cents to eat and you know that for your everything you ate and drank four dollars and fifty cents and so we we learn it and but we live it also you know we actually have to do it and we take pictures of our food and we blog about it and so we in this program that's one of the things i love about this program is that we are not only learning it theoretically we are hands-on learning it also and that makes us better able to pass on the information and to teach others how to do it my goodness, you had to be a vegetarian to eat four dollars a day. No, no, I had chicken and salmon and a lot of other very tasty things that you would never think that you would get to eat on four dollars and fifty cents a day. But I did it. And I think that's about what you get on a snap card. Yeah, yeah. And that was the purpose of it. Mm-hmm. And you know, the AARP has the Fresh Savings Program. If you mm-hmm. have a snap card and you buy fresh produce with it. You get rebates back on your SNAP card to buy more fresh produce the next time. Oh, wow. And we, we, I have a former undergrad that's working for the AARP here in Memphis. And then I have a friend, John Robinson, that's working for the AARP in North Mississippi. And we can give him, like if somebody says, I'm on a SNAP card, how do I sign up? We can give them that information. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's pretty cool, too, since they want to attack the snap cards. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that's really, people need help. A lot of people need help, and yeah. they will need help. And, and that's a good idea to have those things. This is a good idea to be able to tell people how to do it properly, yeah. too, so they can be healthy while they're doing it. I would really, in the future, like to have a van that took fresh produce into these lower-income areas mm. and so that people could purchase it 
and you know use their snap card and i've i've seen these things in other cities or heard about them but we don't have anything like that here but you know i I saw a food truck for sale last night for like almost six thousand dollars Wow. If we could get a grant to buy that food truck, <laughs> we could, you know, drive around and. I do wonder some if it would help to have gardens in different areas around the city that that could be managed. It, uh, I think it does, and at Goodlett Elementary, they have a garden, yeah. and the resource teacher told me that you know the children work in the garden and pick from the garden and take things home from the garden. I don't so know if every there. school has a garden. But, yeah, there's, yeah. I know that there is a not-for-profit in, that is actually based out of, I think, Colorado, but they have a location here called um, the Kitchen Community Gardens, and they work in the local schools to bring ki- community gardens to the schools. And I, I don't know off the top of my head how many that they've brought to Memphis, but a lot of the Memphis City schools now have community gardens in them thanks to that organization, wow. and they work through Memphis Tilth. Yeah. Is the... Yeah. Um, and so they, there's a lot of groups in the city that are doing a lot of good work to try and bring produce and those kind of programs into areas that need it in the city, but it's never enough, no. you know. And then you run into the, the problem of you bring the fresh produce in, but then you get the folks who don't know what to do with it, you know, because you've taken away home economics from the school or the cooking classes from the schools. And if grandma was always the one who cooked the fresh produce and now grandma doesn't cook anymore for whatever reason well i don't know how to cook that so you give them the fresh produce and they don't know what to do with it now and so that's another hurdle to overcome there's another group called the works that one of my graduates is working for them and she taught six weeks of culinary classes for teenagers over the summer and it the mustard seed, whoever, it's a church that started that. They picked up the students and brought them to her. And the facility is on Parkway, not far from I-55. Okay. They have a grocery store and this kitchen where she can teach people to cook. Wow. And it's so hard for me to even grasp that concept uh, because I, I'm old. and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, you know, everybody, my, my, my grandmothers and my aunts and, my, and all of them, my mom and all of them, I mean, that was just, you know, they cooked. They right, all cooked. Right. They, and they, they knew how to do it, and it was a thing. You know, they, I, I remember my Aunt Ernestine, we were standing up in her house with my, I had an Aunt Naomi, her mother was 100, and, Aunt Naomi was 104 at the time. Oh. And uh, she was still getting around pretty good. We were all in their kitchen talking, and we were just talking about things and this and that. And Ernestine, I noticed she was, she, she was busy around in there, though. but uh, we were just talking about it, paying any attention to her. And in about an hour, she came out with a sweet potato pie. You know, she, yeah. she actually had just stood there and made up the whole thing while we were standing there talking. You know? Right. And when I do the Hill program in Hernando, one of the students is going to make low-sodium pumpkin pies. Yeah. And we've done that before, too, and it's also very good. Yeah. At the, um, I did the type 2 diabetes class earlier in September at the Whitehaven Library, and we had another one of the interns with us, and while I was giving the class, literally with a hot plate and a skillet, she sat there and made it was it's called a um, egg roll ca- egg roll skillet meal. Basically, it was a cabbage and beef and that kind of thing, and, but it's carb friendly. It's a diabetic friendly meal. But from start to finish, in the hour or so that I gave the class, she cook this entire meal and then the participants got to eat it and but it was to show them i mean she started with the whole head of cabbage the whole onion you know from real ingredients to show how easy it was and how quick it could be done and that you didn't need a full kitchen we did this in the resources room of the library using a hot plate (laughs) a knife and a cutting board (laughs) you know and so to show that you can make good for you food that's healthy and will nourish your body and make you stronger that can be compliant to dietary restrictions like a diabetic diet and you don't have to have huge facilities you don't have to have a state-of-the-art kitchen you can do this no matter what facilities you have or what resources you have if you're willing to try you just have to be taught though right Right. and we give the recipes out yes Mm -hmm. and 
So I asked everybody that was there got the recipe, um, the leftover ingredients, you know, so we had some oils and things like that. We gave it away. You know, mm. the people that were there, they got to take it home, you know, because yeah. we didn't want to take it back with us. That We bought yeah. it with the grant money for the participants to use. They got to take it. So Wow. I mean, it's, it's, it's all so positive on, on, in, an, in an unpositive society. This is all so, so positive for helping people out and especially for helping people in our area who don't know. Right. Who don't who don't have the resources, and it's the problem of food deserts. Is that still is that growing or decreasing in our area? It's not decreasing. I think mm. it, it may be growing as grocery stores shut down in areas where they can't make enough money. Then you might have a mom and pop small store that only has canned goods and maybe some dairy, but no fresh produce. Mm. Yeah, that's why I like the idea of the food truck that could take produce like once a week if you lived in this neighborhood you know they'd be here monday morning at nine and yeah, go out and get you yeah yeah what you need for your vitamin k <laughs> yeah yeah but i will say on our grocery store tour we do talk you know we go into the canned produce section you know the canned vegetable aisle and the canned fruit aisle and we talk about if this is what fits into your budget this is what you look for this is how to get vegetables into your diet if if all you can afford is the canned stuff let's do this you know get th- let's can. get your vegetables in let's look for let's read the labels let's get the healthiest options available so we make our tours so that no matter what budget you're on you can still be healthy wow well, right. that's pretty cool and if you have to buy if you can't afford the low sodium vegetables say mm-hmm. green beans then look at the frozen ones they're going to be lower in sodium Mm -hmm. and if those Mm -hmm. are too expensive then we tell them to drain the water and rinse it off in the sink before they cook it and that takes care that takes away some of the sodium yeah because those foods are packaged for 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 uh lasting for for, for Mm -hmm. time yeah so we say fresh then frozen then canned (laughs) <laughs> That's our motto. <laughs> right on. So, and again, these are grocery store tours we're talking about and nutrition classes. Led The tours led by nutrition interns and students. The class is taught by dietetic interns and students. And they are free and open to the public. Classes are taught at different locations. So the nutrition classes, the next one up is October the 10th at the South Haven Library at 11 a.m., and then the next one, the next class is October 26th, and it's, this is, and it's on a Healthy Shopping and a Budget, and it's at the Whitehaven Library. And then Frazier's another Healthy Shopping and a Budget, on a Budget uh, class is October the 28th. And then uh, the next grocery store tour is October the 7th at the Horn Lake Kroger, and then October the 14th at the Poplar Cleveland Kroger, and then on November the 4th at the Summer Avenue Kroger, and then November the 11th at the Horn Lake Kroger. And this is all free and open to the public, but you know, so everybody knows who, how many people are going to be there, please call 678-2989, 678-2989, that's 901-678-2909, that's for more information and to register for the classes or the grocery store tours. Right. And that's got to be a lot of fun to do those tours. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it really is. We have a lot of fun, and we try and always have at least two tour guides on each tour, and mm-hmm. so depending on how big or small the tour is, it can be very personal. I mean, we've had, even if there's only one person on the tour, we still give the tour. So yeah. it can be very, very personalized. If you're the only one who shows up, you get a personalized tour of that grocery store. <laughs> um, you know, so we have fun with it, you know, and, yeah. and we talk to the people. And so we figure out as we're going what the tour group is interested in. And so we tailor each tour to the group to that we're group. with. And so, yeah, that, I think that's why part of why people get so much out of it. Instead, we don't have a script. We don't, yeah. we don't have any kind of script. We don't have anything like that. Our tour guides go in the day before and kind of do a walkthrough to figure, make sure they know where everything's at because every Kroger is set up differently. Yeah. And that's another reason why we do these at different Kroger's throughout the city so that that way, hopefully, people can go to the Kroger they shop at. And that way they can actually learn where they're where shopping versus is. trying to go to one Kroger and then try and go back to yeah. their own Kroger and because everyone's different. Everyone's yeah. set up differently. Yeah, right. we, And we're going to be expanding after Christmas. Mm-hmm. I think it's Hacks Cross 
and Winchester. Yeah, the Hex Cross and Winchester location. We're looking at expanding to that one too. Right on. Well, this is this is so cool, and, and, and thank you so much for what you're doing. Oh, you're yeah, welcome. Our community it's, needs it. It's become my new mission. <laughs> <laughs> our community desperately needs it. And again, for more information on the nutrition classes and the grocery store tours, you can call 901-678-2989, 678-2989. Dr. Ruth Williams Hooker, Sarah Zellers, thank you so much for being our guest this morning. Thank you. Thank you. We enjoyed it. All right, and this has been Spotlight 92. We'll do it again next week. In the meantime, you're back for more of the best in jazz. This is U92-FM. 92-FM.